Hi everybody. Today we'll talk about how to write a winning research statement or grant proposal or uh, you know the research proposal, right? What would be the name? Uh, uh, yeah. So how do you write it? Uh, to how do you craft rather uh, such a winning proposal that it end up being funded? right so research statement is another word or grant proposal or write up for internship if you are applying for an internship you need to write a uh, you know a write up a very small and to the point essay a brief write up is really important right so how do you craft it uh, by the way this video is fourth in the series of uh, you know uh, application preparation the first video was on uh, how to craft uh, the, the winning cover letter uh, I have linked up in the show notes of this video. Please check it out. And the second one is that about the resume writing, right? The, the curriculum white or CV or resume, right? So that is also there in the linked up in the in the show notes. And the third one, the last one, uh, was on the statement of purpose or personal statement. So you know all these things are really important if you're applying for a a position or a PhD studentship right so how do you know the final one in this series probably final one or maybe something else to come uh, this one is going to be on research statement or grant proposal of course the grant proposal uh, can be uh, alone as well you don't have to be part of a, a big application right for example if you're a faculty and you're trying for a new grant you know or a, or a scientist you're applying for a new grant call or even a citizen science or a, a, you know a, a general public of course you can apply for you know, public grants like national geographic so how do you apply for that grant that is what this video is all about right and uh, yeah so you might wonder why me right a little bit of boasting i have got 14 research grants till date one four in my 12 years of service so which is i think it's quite remarkable uh, given that I'm from a university setup, you know, uh, from various funders, including CSAR and DST, DST Inspire grant I got, and then DST Core Research grant, the CERB CRG, and the Ministry of Earth Sciences, uh, even Humanities grant I got, that is ICSSR grant, UGC also funded my some of my major projects, right? So 14 grand, which is the, the sum is more than 2.13 crores, of Indian rupees, you can check out my uh, my website for further details. What these projects are all about. So, with this experience, so let me share my general tips on uh, you know how to craft this research proposal, right? So, the first tip is that read the formatting guidelines in the grant call very carefully. Uh, deviations from that pro forma, that is the format, is not really tolerated at all. And also, do check the word limit. You know and if uh, don't exceed that word limit okay that is really fundamental to any grant proposal right you can actually decrease a word but it's better to be somewhere around that uh, max word limit right so that shows that you're really committed on this proposal right it's not just a time pass for you right so yeah you have to be you know you have to be intentional just like when you're writing your statement of purpose uh, this research statement also you have to be intentional on it you know it's not just a robotic then no one is going to fund your proposal or idea right and um, usually i start with tabula rasa that is a latin uh, word for blank slate you know like this a page a blank page and then i write you know the ideas and then i expand the ideas like a mind map and that, that is where i i start my ideas Okay, so with a mind map form, only concepts and expanding those nodes in the concept, that is the first step. And uh, if you are like me, with the, the uh, first language, not English, in my case it is Malayalam, it's better to write that first step in your mother tongue where you think, you know. And uh, yeah, I'm also quite comfortable with um, uh, my own language, Malayalam, right? So in the first step, stick with your language. And at the second step, when you expand these notes into the core proposal, you can use the English. So always start with a blank page to, to put your ideas in it. Of course, the research statement is all about original idea, right? Uh, it, it has to be original, okay? And it's better to be short and sweet rather than simply 
uh, you know uh, so big junk with full of fillers you know that stretch out like elastic uh, cord you know for example this is a phd thesis just i got it for evaluation look at this how thick it is around 650 pages uh, you know uh, i'm not telling who's this or from which university i got it from this is to evaluate this phd thesis in comparison my own thesis is only like this this is in japanese you know uh, because this is actually from you know a university in japan so it's, it's always better to be short brief and sweet full of the cream or meat whatever you call it rather than simply putting like that right yeah, stretching like elastic i hate it okay so don't do that uh, fillers never use fillers just for the sake of expanding your thesis into lots of pages that doesn't actually suffice anything because the people who are going to read your thesis don't have time and also they are really smart people okay mind it they are not like sleepy old university professors no they are qualified enough to check your proposal okay and uh, yes so uh, it's very basic check the grammar that's uh, you know su su such a simple thing people over you know overlook this simple thing like checking the grammar or even what microsoft word tell you you know it underlines right the grammar and spelling mistake uh, you know the red color for the spelling isn't it even that people are not really bothered to change it or they are too lazy to change it so if you're that much lazy then as a funder why should i fund your proposal you know so check the grammar check the style you know so uh, uh you know so the the of course uh, you can go with some style book or uh, you know and also of course the consistency you know so the consistency of the english is also important so you can use a uh, copy editing tools uh tool like um, grammarly quite popular though it cost money right otherwise improve your grammar and improve your style right so yeah there is uh, stunk and white there is a very famous book on uh, elements of style uh, for general tips on improving your communication and for improving your soft skill and even for grand application this is my new book life skills the link is in the show notes of this video please check it out as well okay so all these tips are already there in my book which is quite expanded uh, the video which you're uh, seeing is quite a uh, uh, simplified version the crux of uh, grand writing okay uh, and of course post proofread the zero tolerance of plagiarism is extremely important so remove any section which has been plagiarized from uh, you know uh, from your uh, proposal okay the textual plagiarism especially but if you are using like the titles in the reference section which the software detect to be plagiarism don't worry about it that is not a plagiarism so it is basically it's an ai based tool right so those things you don't have to worry anything on your uh, references section but in the real uh, proposal you know the text matter uh, you know so the, the entire sentences should not be copied from anywhere it has to be original okay if they found that it has been plagiarized so it's simple you know they will trash it right so that is zero plagiarism is really important and another very interesting tip is or rather uh, you know it, it simplifies your time also is that have multiple proposals ready in your desk or in your you know in your computer and ready to try whenever there is a new call by the way in my youtube channel i do have a program called curiosity uh, which is monthly science show which also features several grand calls international as well as national across the discipline humanities and sciences so check out that uh, you know the curiosity show for uh, uh, staying up to date and abreast with the grand calls so over the years the pattern which i recognized is that usually the grand call to the deadline it's just matter of few weeks usually it's like one month so in one month you're supposed to write the entire proposal you should uh, be able to proofread it and you should submit your institution for a uh, forwarding letter and permission to apply and then upload all those documents so it takes time so it's always better to be prepared be proactive so have several even 10 research proposal in your computer ready to submit of course you need to tweak it 
to meet the formatting guidelines you know so that is really important and uh, yes yeah, so of course avoid controversial topics in your proposal uh, you know especially if you're trying for a government calls any proposal which criticizes the government policy or you know even examining the government policy they will not entertain okay be beware of this in your mind so anything which is really controversial try to avoid it okay uh, in your proposal and also uh yes yeah, so if you are trying for a, a private uh, funding then again the you know the uh, you know so the uh you know that uh, again the you know criticizing the private venture or uh, examining their policy might not be good for them right so that is why you have to be worried about all those uh, uh, you know um, silent words right so yeah so the controversy just try to completely avoid it okay and then interdisciplinary projects are nowadays much more entertained right they will be uh, chance are high that uh, the funders will fund if it has some interdisciplinary elements so for that you can go for collaboration you can even go for multi-institutional collaboration there is a new trend here in india the proposal with multi-institutional collaborations uh, there is a very high chance of success so go for it you know so think of something out of the box you know though it is a cliche and uh, even if uh, the call is for the basic sciences you know if you add little bit on the application then there is a very high chance that it will be true so of course the funders will definitely look for the application or uh, what is the outcome of your proposal you know and if you can justify your proposal in such a way that it bestows uh, you know uh, some good application for the humanity or to the environment then you know chance high that it will be true so of course there are certain uh, call which are really blue skies research for example in german this dfg you know german funders they do have an annual call with dst uh, which is uh, you know which is on the blue skies research in that cases you don't really have to but in most of the other cases some application if you add on that is like an icing on the cake okay so beware of that as well if you add on the application the utility rather than simply going with the the fundamental sciences of course my research is mostly fundamental no the taxonomy but i still add little bit on the application so if you add it then chance of uh, acceptance is pretty high so as a funder uh, what will you look into the application so usually we look at the originality you know proposal is it really original or has it been simply uh, a repetition of somebody else's proposal right and that originality is really important and conflict of interest is also very important which i told you the criticizing the government uh you know or the private party right if there is a conflict of interest between the funders and the applicant then it's the likelihood of getting accepted is pretty low okay so originality is very very important and the relevance is also important how relevant the topic is in the current scenario you know so uh, and also the feasibility another criterion uh, for the judging the proposal how feasible uh, they will carefully look at your uh, uh, methods section usually proposal follow you know introduction then uh, methods introduction and peer review then methods and expected outcome right so in that methods they will look for how feasible to undertake this proposal in your institution you know do you have sufficient infrastructure to support this proposal or are you really capable enough to undertake this proposal all those are the questions that the funders will have and finally funders will also look for the prior works that you did so again they might not ask you explicitly in the format of the grant proposal that uh, you, there should be a, a, a you know a section on prior work even if there is nothing you you are welcome to add if you did some prior work uh, in that section you can expand what how qualified you are to undertake this grant proposal okay so if you did some pilot uh, studies or preliminary works you know you can scale up in the the main proposal state it you know so that is really important now coming to one by one the different uh, parts of this grant writing first is going to be like your title and uh, uh, it has to be original and you really need to spend some time on refining and crafting a catchy title and the title if it is not original 
uh, you're simply following somebody else's work done elsewhere then they won't even look further what you have written you know whatever you submit or simply go waste <laughs> you know unfortunately so title and the contents have to be original that's that's fundamental next part of the proposal is going to be objective where uh, you know you have to state what exactly you're planning to achieve in your or deliverables in your uh, proposal right so they can use deliverable or objective read carefully the formatting guidelines of the grand core okay and it's always better to use the, the bullet point rather than simply typing in paragraph the, the objectives right and it's always better to be precise and specific so any kind of objective has to be precise specific and measurable you know so if it is not measurable if it's simply vague then how will you know that did you achieve that objective or not right so it's really important it's very fundamental too right i have written that in uh, in my book as well about the goal setting right uh, that every goal has to be precise and uh, measurable too you know so otherwise the goal makes no sense right now coming the next part is going to be your review of literature or introduction you know <clears throat> like the the national status review and international also uh, be up to date with that work and don't miss the latest uh, research publications and important citations in your bibliography it has to be up to date in case you miss some uh, you know some major publications that means that you don't didn't even spend some time on crafting this grant then uh, why should the funders fund your grant proposal you know so read it spend some time with google scholar really accessible uh, to everybody on the planet you know and uh, you can also put several delimiters uh, like for example uh, publications from 2021 only you know whatever idea you have in the latest publications uh, you can cite some of the relevant publications in your you know in your proposal so be up to date everybody is going to read the funders definitely going to have look uh, the bibliography section or reference section in case they made up to that you know if your title itself is not original they will not read further right i, I, I tell you again and again right and uh, of course uh, uh, referencing style is also important and you have to follow uh, whatever they uh, you know the, the formatting guidelines right so you can use uh, Mendeley. Mendeley is a freely available tool or my favorite is EndNote. You know, of course, it costs money, right? So this is for the in-text citation and uh, all these referencing, you know, uh, rough works or rough man's tool. All these have got style options, you know, and you can uh, tweak the existing style to, uh, you know, to uh, comply with the guidelines, the formatting guidelines of the grand core and uh, you also have to identify the knowledge gaps in your review of literature so final section of the review of literature is going to be knowledge gap the knowledge gap means that what is missing from previous work uh, which you're you're going to fill in the gap through your proposal that is very important you know so knowledge gap or knowledge lacune section is also important you don't really have to subhead but you can write it in a uh, the, uh, uh, you know final paragraph of the review of literature that even though so many research have been dirt, done uh, no one has worked on this aspect of the the research uh, which is uh, the, the rationale or motivation for you to undertake the present research proposal you know you can write like that and then comes methodology section so methodology is how are you going to do that grant you know so methodology it's better to use a graphical schema you know you can you can use freely available tools uh, like paint.net which is so much better than uh, usual microsoft paint okay and a lot of online tutorials on how to use the paint.net or my favorite tool for any kind of this uh, graphics making is uh, adobe illustrator you know or coral draw uh, that is I'm, I'm more into the adobe okay so adobe again adobe cost money right and if you don't want to spend money then stick with the paint.net though options are limited but still you can you can get a pretty good graphics in it okay 
So graphical flow chart or the schema is uh, always preferable. That shows that you're really committed on this undertaking. But avoid the fancy graphics and 3D effects and color, you know, uh, unless it is really an essential part, uh, avoid this fancy thing. Uh, people are not really carried away with the fancy instead people get irritated many of the academicians get irritated seeing this kind of fancy and also like uh, you know uh, powerpoint has got built-in flow chart you know or uh, microsoft word also have got stay away from it just make very simple uh, you know uh, graphical schema of your you know this uh, method section then after the method section you can also write on the preliminary works already done so that can add immense value to your proposal if you have already done some preliminary works like the pilot study uh, you know even though it is scaled down like a small survey you did it uh, to calculate the size required at the uh, given standard deviation you know uh, if your proposal is in humanities for example for a large scale public perception survey in that case the preliminary work even if you did this work only within your institute add value you know so and also now coming the next is going to be the expected outcome of your proposal so once you complete this proposal in the timeline what are the deliverables what do you expect to complete right so you have to expand on that section and also it's always better as i told you to include few points on how uh, you know how uh, how worthy this proposal is on a, a grander scheme of things like uh, application for humanity or for environment or does it address any of the UN uh, sustainable developmental goals the so 17 goals definitely you can you can link any of the proposal to any any one of these 17 UN SDG you can you can state it you know so that is the relevance of it right and the expected outcome mapped on to the un sdgs uh, i think it's a smart move and finally you need to put a timeline on your grant proposal so how long it takes for you to complete the proposal again you have to stick with the grant core you know so if the grant funders are ready to fund it for five years then you can expand it to the five years otherwise if it's only one year you know then you know you have to limit into the guideline and for that, it's always better to use PERT chart or GRANT chart. So GRANT or PERT is just a scheme with the months written on the top and deliverable and you know what, what how you are planning to execute the proposal, right? So check it out, GRANT chart, G-R-A-N-T-T, -T, right? Or PERT, P-E-R-T, PERT chart, right? So it's better to use any of these charts for your timeline of your proposal. And then after timeline, uh, you know, you have to put budget. So again, some call doesn't even ask you for the budget, but in case they ask you, you need to put the budget. Budget means like, uh, you know, uh, equipments, for example, right? Like that is also called non-recurring expenses here in India. And recurring expense include consumable and manpower. In case you want to hire a, a junior research fellow or a research associate, or a postdoctoral fellow into your pro uh, project uh, to execute the proposal then you have to state it you know and for them how much is the the salary per month including hra that is one month expand that into the period of the proposal so you have to be really specific you know and also finally you have to specify uh, about the overhead charges so some money goes to your institute right uh, for example the clerical charges involved also the electricity and water connection charges right so overhead charges is also very important so usually it's like five percentage even two percent or some projects explicitly state that no overhead is allowed so you have to follow their guideline okay so read carefully their guidelines okay and uh, this budget every section it's better to justify it for example if you want a new equipment you know so you have to justify the requirement of that equipment in case for example uh, you are asking for a, a, a machine you know uh, for example a microscope you know so say that clearly you don't have that equipment in your institute right and that is the reason you really need to buy that equipment of course you have to state the truth okay in case you have it then uh, uh, why you want to flaunt the same equipment again just redundancy right 
so yeah so every justification including your junior research fellow why uh, you need a jr of instead of you yourself undertake it justify it so justification of each point of the budget is really important and then references the final part of any proposal is going to be uh, references so uh, follow the formatting guideline and in case they didn't specify i suggest you to go with the latest apa format in case uh, you are from uh, sciences or technology side apa format is basically the american psychological association format uh, you know for technical and sciences uh, it's widely followed apa fourth edition or third edition right you can just follow the latest apa and in case you are from humanities uh, psychology languages and even philosophy uh, it's better to follow mla style that is basically modern language association style mla style okay so it's just matter of choosing in the drop down menu in the end note or mentally okay so uh, either of this style is perfect for it okay i hope you find this video useful and for further tips please check out my new book uh, life skills okay it's available uh, at a reduced rate please check out the link in the show notes and also do check out other related videos which i mentioned in the beginning of this video all the links are in the show notes of this video my best wishes for uh, all the success for your uh, proposal writing i hope you will you will win this grant if you find this video useful please do share in your uh, social circles thank you and take care bye bye